What about emptiness tests? So emptiness tests are checking if a given language is empty. So to put it simply, is a DFA empty? That is to say, does it reject all inputs? Is a, con a grammar empty? That is to say, does it reject all inputs? The PDA empty? Those are the kinds of questions we're asking now. So what about decidability? Right? That's always what we're asking. Is testing, the decided, is testing if a DFA is empty decidable or not? So can we write an algorithm that for all DFAs, it's always able to say whether that DFA will always accept at least one word or will always reject? The algorithm, if we think about DFAs, DFAs are always easier to think about, right? Because they're very simple. So how would you be able to, just by inspecting a DFA, looking at the diagram, be able to know whether a DFA rejects all words? How would you do that? Well, one way that you could do is look at all the states. Do you have any uh, accepting states there? If you can see with your eyes any accepting states, then it will accept at least one word. Right? There is a path, if there's a path from the starting node until the accepting node. There is at least one path. There is at least one word that is accepted. You could have loops around it, which means you could accept more. But if there's a path, that means there is a word, at least one word that is accepted. So emptiness would mean that the DFA would have to reject everything. So there is, is simply a DFA that has no accepting states. Can we write an algorithm that is able to check if all the states are either ac accepting, if, if there is at least one accepting state? I think so, yes, right? What do we need to do? We ne just need to write like a DFS algorithm that, that just goes over all the, DF all the, the reachable states, right? Make sure you don't revisit any nodes. And an algorithm like that, as long as you avoid loops, right? You don't have to visit a state twice. As long as you avoid loops, then this algorithm would terminate for all, for all inputs, which means you would always be able to know whether the DFA is empty or not. And this is the algorithm that is in the book. And because the number of states of a DFA is finite, then the algorithm would also be finite. Essentially, what you need to do is go through all reachable all reachable states is that reachable state go through the first one until the end if the first one if you find there's a finite state a finite number of states just go through all of them first one that is if you find one that is uh, accepting then you reject say no the dfa is will accept something so it's not empty and if you go over all states and none of it are accepting, then the whole thing is empty. Reject all strings. So the, the algorithm is trivial and terminates for all input because all states are, all DFAs have a finite number. So this is an example of an implementation, how you would do. And actually, if you are curious, you can go to the Karakuri. Uh, library that I that we have on our course web page and it contains algorithms for DFAs and NFAs and text tree languages and so on. But if you go to the module regular, you will find this algorithm that checks if a DFA is empty. This is implemented in Python. Hopefully you are not you are familiar with that. But this is an example of an algorithm. And as you might imagine, the number, if you are visiting all nodes, eventually you will visit it. Since you have to go through all nodes, eventually it will terminate. So this loop will terminate. And then this is a, a bounded loop, which terminates, and therefore the whole thing. And it always returns true or false. You would have then to make the argument whether this always returns 
and only if empty. So what about a context-free grammar? Can we always know whether whether for any context-free grammar that context-free grammar empty or not? So this is the algorithm that is in the book. The idea is again to look at the grammar as a graph. And then you have to find basically if you have loops, basically if you can find a terminal, that means you can accept at least one word. What you have to do, the basic idea behind the algorithm is you interpret the grammar where you have this edge, you have an edge from here to A1 or, or to A2, that would be an edge G to A1, G to A N. So if you can represent so there is a way to represent the grammar as a tree. The basic idea is not sorry, not a tree, it's a graph because you can have backwards. It's a graph, and you just have to go through again, do a depth first visit on the, the graph that represents the grammar. And if you can find any terminal, that means that um the grammar would produce at least one terminal. So eventually it would it would accept one word. And if that's the case, then reject it otherwise. So the next video we're going to talk about equality tests.